Okay, this is going to be a video about the pocket operator, the PO33 to be exact. This is my case. Um, and it obviously it doesn't have what each button is, but I'll, t I'll tell you which, which or what each button, I can't even get my words out right, is. And then I'll tell you, you know, but there's a lot of, <clears throat> kind of like the SP, there's a lot of uh, things you got to press to get to the next thing type. Obviously you have 16 pads, which hold sounds. The top two rows also act, act as melodic pads. The bottom two is drums, right? The bottom two or bottom two rows, if you put um, stuff into that, they will chop them up. And I believe if I'm right, it chops it by the transients or what it thinks is the transients, okay? Um, so then you have the record button, the effects button. I'll show you what that does in a second. The play button and the right button. So think of the right button as the button when you wanna actually input sounds up here. If you can see, I'm trying not to blur the camera because the pocket operator is really hard to film. This button here acts as the sound button, we'll call it, just because where you access your sounds. This is your patterns. And then this button here is where you use for your beat, um, beat per, ah, BPM, as well as if you hold a pad down you can also do like triggers like uh you know stuttering and stuff of that nature i'm gonna try to tilt it up so you can see on there don't disregard all this stuff because it might get confusing but the two knobs act as your dials sometimes you'll be using them to change the pitch filters adjust settings trim on your uh on your stuff so that's the basis of it there's an input output here and on this side of it, you'll see there's an input. So you can record into it, obviously, the 3.5 and then out. out. You'll see I'll hook mine to the SP because my SP runs into my sound card and then I don't have to do a bunch of extra wires. I'm trying to eliminate as many. But then I use this wire here, which is for my iPhone, right, into there. And then I'll just plug that in and record into it. So here's a beat. I'll just show you a beat that I'm working on. So I'm still learning, but <clears throat> Basically what I did was, and again, this is really hard to record. I'll try to see if I can get it closer. Is once I press this, you'll see I have, I'll have the kick and snare here. This is the hat. And then this right here is the actual sample, the original sample, right? Mm -hmm. So I took that and chopped it up. I put in the melodic first, then I dropped it down here. I guess you, I reckon you could just drop it here and be okay. And I'm trying to let you see what this is. So anyway, so look, watch now I'm in performance mode. If you can see up here, but it doesn't say it. If I press this, you'll see I go to edit mode and performance. So in performance is where I can hear the sound. And then edit is where I actually make the adjustments and steps. Okay, so I'm in performance, <clears throat> performance. Here's all the samples. And what I did was I, I got this trick from old Ricky uh, and I, he said basically, I think this is my style. All right. And he basically said like he'll sample in the piece, he'll drop in the drums, he'll split it across the tracks. And then what he'll do is he starts with the first sample and then adjust the um, trim and adjust the trim by the way, if you can see this, you double click here. You see TRI at the corner, then it'll it'll do it. So you got tone, this is your like tone, just like in Koala you would use, right? Filter is like high pass, low pass, bypass filters. And the, and the resonance I think is on there. And these are that's controlled by these knobs. And then you got your trim. So he'll use the trim and what it'll do is he'll take the trim and start with the first sample and then tr when it's in, Trim, uh, extend it all the way out to its full potential because they cut each other off anyway. So they're sort of gated 
Or wait, is it gated? It's sort of gated. I, I want to say it's kind of weird the way it does it. It's not really like... It's like if you let it go, it's going to play the sample all the way through. So technically, it's one shot. But because they do cut each other off, it's um, sort of gated too. I guess that makes sense. Hopefully, that makes sense. And hopefully, if I'm saying something wrong, somebody will correct me. But whatever. Um, so you put your samples in, figure out the chops, right? And instead of just figuring out the chop, go ahead and chop it all the way so you'll see. chops now you could leave it with the way it chops and it chops the sample and just play it that way it works or you can extend it out which is what i did i extend it out that way if i want to let a chop go a little bit longer than what it was that's fine right versus it just cutting off real quick and then i have to jump to the next one so that was a cool little technique and that's what i did on this song and then when i went in hit the sound again you'll see i picked this the drum and snare so let's do that just pick that and there's all kinds of chops in here. So I didn't use all of them. Obviously, I only used two. I used the kick and the snare. That's it. I trimmed it to the way I liked it. I didn't want to use the hat for some reason. When I that one could work, but it's that extra little something in it that I don't like. And I, I it's not like on a computer where you can clean it up, right? You just it is what it is. So that's why I went back on this and got um, this hat. And you'll see it chopped it into three pieces, but I took the centerpiece so it wouldn't be so loud. You could adjust the tone if you want to or adjust the first piece and just make it the whole trim it to where or extend the trim to where it's the whole hat. I didn't do that. I just took this one and plugged it in. So then so let's say we're on the hat. You'll see I just did hats on the straight. You can do multiples, add triggers to them, whichever you want to do. And then there's patterns, which is important. And that's the biggest thing so you don't get so repetitive. So when you hit pattern, you'll see I have the first probably five patterns filled. And so then I'll hit, and I'm going to do it off so I don't mess it up. I hold pattern and I hit the button however many times I want it to play. So if I want, this is, each one is basically a bar. Uh, if you know what I mean by that, it's like a, there, there's a boom, clap, boom, clap, right? Just a bar, a straight one bar. So uh, what you have to do is link those bars together. So if you want the first bar to play twice, then hit it twice. While you're holding down pattern, touch that twice and so on and so forth. And then, so I linked them together. The way I did it was, I'll show you, I did one two three four one two three and then i made this one something different four so this is so again you heard what it sounds like if you want to go back and listen to it but yeah and then it'll play those patterns if you look at the top here you see the patterns changing the one two three it's going to go to four now it's going to go back to one see two three and then it's going to go five So that's how you do it in here. What I like about the pocket operator is the sound. It's 8-bit, but they they put the sample rate, I want to say it's around 24 kilohertz, something like that. So that sample rate makes it sound really good. It, it sounds dirty, but it's not like too dirty where it's muddy. And so you can use it, and even if you don't use it uh, for drums, let's say you want to do your drums in like the SP, or um, you could at least get the samples in here and then play them back how you want them into your DAW or into whatever, even the iPad if you want to, and at least get that that sound, that eight bit sound. The other object, if you don't have this, is use a um, use Tone Boosters Bit Juggler, which I really like, and you can adjust the sample rate as well as the bit rate. Um, so if you don't have access to a pocket operator, it's okay, you can still do it. But they are fun to use and plug your headphones on and get off of your computer for a little bit and just have something different it's a little challenging too so anyway that's it for this video i just wanted to introduce you to what i'm doing with the pocket operator all right